It is going to be launched in pieces, we've noted. The first element is going to be launched by the Russians. Uh, Reinforcing the Iron Curtain and leaving... Laboratory. But the most interesting things involving John Glenn were the experiments on Glenn himself. And so probably most people are familiar with that halter he, uh, or net that he wore around his head that had 23 different leads on it. Uh, it, ha it had a monitor down here to track his breathing. Uh, it had a brainwave monitor. It, it uh, felt the, the muscles twitch in the face to, uh, to track exactly how he slept. And, uh, and a lot of that information, and then they'll, they'll do the same thing with him on the ground uh, after he's a couple of days out from this flight to compare it to see just how he was sleeping or and during some of his waking hours in space as well. And then there was one other very, very interesting test. There's a lot of talk about does, does space slow up your thinking? And particularly when you relate it to sleep, all the astronauts sleep less in space. The fact that they get less sleep, is it just that they need less sleep in space? Or might that really take a toll on the body or on the thought process? And so uh, Glenn and the Japanese astronaut, Shiaki Mukai, uh, took these cognitive tests four times uh, during the flight, the day after they'd been monitored overnight. And uh, their memory test recognition, uh, simple tasks like that, but they wanted to time uh, their reactions to what they would be on the ground. Uh, so they'll, they'll learn a lot from that, too. But the most interesting experiments about uh, Glenn that uh, John Glenn participated in were all about uh, himself, uh, how a 77-year-old pers person reacts to weightlessness. Also important to remember that it was back in 1995, sitting at his Senate, Senate office, John Glenn, on a legal pad, came up, um, and if he hadn't been a senator, he could have been a lobbyist. He is an, a very, very effective person. Tastes. <laughs> I don't know. I've never had a chance to try it out. I can't imagine NASA would have been too pleased if you had done uh, something <laughs> like that, Jim. Well, I was going to be isolated for 18 days anyway. All right. Okay. Well, I, again, uh, Discovery, uh, let's take a another look at the pictures if we have them available to us. Discovery uh, coming into one of those screaming landings at, what is it, Winston, 230 miles an hour approximately oh, when it glides? About, that's correct, about 230 miles per hour, and that's uh, very, very fast. A normal airline lands at just over 100 miles per hour. So this but, is a very, very fast landing. But a snail's pace compared to what they'd been doing just maybe 10 minutes before when they were at Mach no 17 or something like well, that, well over... Uh, well over uh, 17,000 miles per hour in orbit. Right, in orbit. Yeah. But you yeah. mentioned that they had a TACAN system on these new shuttles now, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And that is something that the military's had. It's a navigation system that we've used for years and years, and so I'm surprised they just put one on the shuttle. Oh, no, no, the TACAN has been on the shuttle for many years. As a matter oh. of fact, we're transitioning from TACAN, a ground-based navigation system, to global positioning systems, which is satellite-based navigation system. In the old days, when uh, people like Jim Lovell returned to Earth after that incredibly difficult and harrowing Apollo 13 mission, it was, it was a real hero's welcome that awaited astronauts returning from space. These days, Winston, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. Uh, we're still giving a hero's welcome, but the crowd gets much smaller now. There are friends and families and the technicians that, that work the program. And, uh, but again, it's, it's exciting, and uh, we're happy for everybody that shares in that excitement. Let's take a look. The door has opened, and uh, the crew of Discovery has emerged. And there's a nice close shot there. Let's listen in to what NASA is saying. <laughs> Xiao Uchida, the president of NASDA, greeting the crew. <laughs> NASDA is the Japanese space agency. The president of NASDA is there, of course, to re greet Dr. Chiaki Mukai, the first Japanese woman in space. And this the crew will now flight. take a look around Space Shuttle Discovery. John, I think that John Glenn is walking. And hopefully we'll... Uh, hear a few words from them at the uh, microphone which is set up on the runway. Well, if you've been with our coverage throughout uh, the morning and the afternoon, you know that uh, Jim Lovell and I had a small wager going here as to whether or not John Glenn would be emerging in a, in a wheelchair as the doctors might have wished, or whether he'd be walking on his own two feet. And that's certainly what we see him doing there now. 
and a wheelchair not because he would be so debilitated by the experience but because doctors would like to get a, a real indication of just how much strength he might have lost during his nine days in uh, zero gravity and so by putting him in a wheelchair the not letting him walk around will be the first to make some comments the discovery has landed and spirits in america and europe and japan saw and let me introduce you to the leader who made that happen, Commander Kurt Brown. Well, I'm not going to say too much because I think uh, Senator Glenn said it all at landing. Uh, we had a very um, successful flight. We wanted to thank KSC for giving us a vehicle discovery that had absolutely no problems. And uh, we're very... Uh, we're just very thrilled to bring it back to Kennedy today in the same condition that we left in. And I'd also like to thank uh, the Johnson Space Center and all the folks there who trained us and all the payload folks who got it all organized and, um, and Mission Control that spent all the long hours there uh, supporting the mission because, as you know, we can't do this without a team. And we've got a very good team on 95. And uh, with that, again, we had a very good mission, and we're going to walk around our vehicle and see what it really looks like. Thank you. And so there they go, the seven members of the uh, Discovery crew. Kurt Brown, the commander, a veteran of six missions in space now on board the uh, various shuttles. Always uh, NASA custom for the commander to thank the team. There's some 14,000 people that work here at the Kennedy Space Center, all part of the effort to get the shuttles to fly safely, launch from here, and then return as safely as they can. There he is with uh, pilot Steve Lindsay, Scott Parazinski off in the uh, distance there. As they take a look at this orbiter. We're talking to uh, Bob Cabana a little while ago. There's John Glenn. And uh, we're talking to Bob Cabana a little earlier about how this, uh, head of the astronaut office, Charlie Precourt, was right behind John Glenn there. He is the man who was flying that shuttle training aircraft this morning, who uh, came to that uh, final conclusion that um, the crosswinds weren't a big issue. And, uh, you know, you can, you can look at the uh, satellites and look at the instruments as much as you like, but uh, having somebody out there, a human in the loop, who is uh, actually making an evaluation, I think is probably the most critical one. And there's John Glenn uh, speaking with Daniel Golden, Pedro Duque. Getting an opportunity to see this remarkable vehicle that has uh, returned from such dizzying heights so dizzyingly fast. And dare I say, Senator Glenn is moving a little bit gingerly. And this is uh, to be expected uh, from most anybody who spent nine days floating around a weightlessness. Resuming that balance is uh, not an easy thing. And uh, the inner ear is confused and many of the other cues that the body is uh, no longer accustomed to uh, can cause confusion as well. Shuttle protected by tens of thousands of those heat protecting tiles. The black ones underneath are the ones able to withstand the greatest heat, some 3,000 degrees. Walter Cronkite was saying earlier uh, in the early days of the shuttle mission, they had some difficulty keeping those tiles on. Uh, some of them were falling off. They have since rectified that problem. Obviously a serious problem because uh, the heat of reentry is uh, something that can cause uh, great harm to a spacecraft. There's the, uh, the crew now familiar is. silver vehicle, which uh, carries astronauts astro around. Van. Transfer van to take them to the astronaut quarters in the operations and checkout building, which is located about five miles to the south. All right, that pretty much wraps it up. That's the crew of Discovery 7. Everybody looking. Uh, Hale and Hardy after nine days in space. Stay with CNN as we continue our coverage of this. We'll have a news conference from the flight controllers very shortly, and later this evening, a crew news conference. I'm Miles O'Brien, reporting live from the Kennedy Space Center.